Let's go. <laughs> Double big news for the Tesla Model Y. Why? You got that? Thank you. <laughs> First of all, the performance model, Tesla Model Y performance with supercar-like acceleration on the German Autobahn. And this one here is the Tesla Model Y from Germany, from Berlin, Giga, near Berlin, of course, Berlin, Brandenburg, the official one. Well, and we'll test it here with Thomas and Autofuel. Let's go. We can see here in the front these new LED units. This is the last step before matrix LED will be introduced. And there you have also this white element in the top part. And we have 21 inch wheels, usually 19 or 20 for the long range model. And here also red brake calipers in the contrast to this so-called Uber turbine style. By the way, there is no such word as Uber. It's called Uber with an U, a German Umlaut U. Listen and repeat. So Elon, if you're building cars in Germany now, then also use the German Umlaut U. So the side profile works very well for the vehicle with that sporty look, definitely pretty cool. Well, but suspension wise, also a little bit lower, different hardware, stiffer and 21 inch wheels. We know the suspension was a big problem so far with the long range model, at least the one I test from Shanghai. Will it be better in the riding comfort? Although it has a sportier setup, we will check that out in the driving part. And the performance model also gets a special detail in the rear because it gets this carbon fiber lip right here. And we heard the models from Berlin, the very first ones were not well built, but here, you know, a couple of weeks or months later, panel gaps actually seem to be quite well done. And what's it in German? The famous German Spaltmasse. Listen and repeat. Spaltmasse. Panel gaps. <laughs> and facts and figures. Acceleration figure here 3.7 seconds from standstill, 0 to 1 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour, whereas the long range model goes 5 seconds. Both have one electric motor in the rear and one in the front. This one here just tuned a little bit more for more performance and also upgrade top speed 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour whereas the long range model is 217 kilometers an hour or 135 miles an hour. Still not a fan of these flush door handles that's the way they open to me a little bit more complicated and door closing sound actually quite solid considering it is frameless here and dual insulation glass. Interior here with a nice bright and matte wood styling. I love that. And the sad thing is if you go for the white interior, so two choices, either this black one here or the white one, then with the white one you cannot go for the wood. In any cases, it's a vegan vehicle, so you don't have any animal materials. Also the steering wheel is a leather red and it's also high grade, really soft, nice. That's how it's done. And the performance model here gets these sporty pedals in aluminum. Here easy entry function so when I get into the vehicle the steering wheel goes down towards me and with 1 meters 89 or 6 foot 2 here plenty of headroom left no problem. This panoramic roof is somewhat also a problem because it does get really hot in summertime that's why why people in Texas for example or in other hot states actually put a cover on the glass roof in vehicle color like a wrap in vehicle paint both for the Model 3 and for the Model Y because there is no shade. Other than that, you can also adjust the steering wheel in the menu, then up, down, in, out, and so on. I think it's decently comfortable. The seat's not the best for the tallest guys. And also, if you're, like, you know, if you're really slim, a little bit less tall, then it's fine, actually. They, then the seats case you in quite well. But for me, it's okay, but not superb. Definitely always amazing how clean this interior is, but I still think that the digital instruments are missing. Speed here for me is really not enough. 15 inch screen here with all the vehicle setups and well actually for driving chill acceleration is more than enough but of course here I'll test the sport for you here today. The map super responsive and they just have one of the best software systems there on the market overall. The cameras here you yeah, see the rear door is opened great resolution and the cool thing is also that when you're driving and then use the turning indicator here for blind spot monitor there you see right or left side camera then is also in this different um, color scheme here and 
a real blind spot monitor in a side mirror is better at least we do have that here now so um, yeah that's definitely a nice upgrade which has been introduced recently here we have this app view perspective as well so you get along with it quite well you can also individualize the car very well the only thing is you do not have apple carplay or android auto so you always just use the bluetooth connectivity of your phone and temperature in the lower part um yeah real gauges are definitely better because this is an analog wristwatch and would i always want to talk to the watch to get the time no i just look at it and there it is and the same way i want to control the climate unit and not talk to the car i'm cold i'm cold i'm cold yeah and obviously that's the thing connection error set see here there's a bad signal here in that area there the things start and always cool to have two inductive charging pads there in the front however cup holders not adaptive that should be fixed what about the range here we can score some 17 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles in summertime mild temperatures means maximum of 450 kilometers or 280 miles in winter time will be less and the more realistic range also for different conditions is more like 400 kilometers or 250 miles exact consumption and efficiency in winter time there's a separate video we have on that and supercharging last time we scored 200 kilowatt max dc and 30 minutes state of charge from 10 to 80 percent oh, that's something you see quite frequently fog building inside of that windscreen and also even when the ac is on and these wipers hear that clock they're quite loud in the rear there's also nice soft touch leatherette at the inside of the doors it's really cool here fits very well with four not only four but five tall adults no middle tunnel whatsoever really using this ev platform that's great to use bc chargers really comfortably also in the rear and great view through that panoramic roof so you can move around freely here and with 189 or six foot two also leaves enough headroom it's just a glass above that and no problem also when you take a look here at the panel gaps it seems fine oh and by the way you can also adjust here the back part a little bit more upright or a little bit further front opening really spacious nicely done so oh, can we take a moment and concentrate on that beautiful lens flare effect Ooh, yeah okay about the trunk you can see here the length here more than a meter of 40 inches width also easily a meter of 40 inches and the height here about 70 centimeters or 28 inches very well usable you now have this cover here which is i would say mediocre you put it forward like this and then you can remove it but it doesn't seem fitting for the vehicle what is rather fitting is that you still have even more space here underneath and in the trunk you can pull these you know they now have symbols and then they fold let's check it out Oh, it doesn't work simultaneously there we go um here here we see a gap now here in this transition that is not that nice and you see here i need to push that one down a little bit further but overall mechanism works and then the length here now is almost 119 meters or 73 inches cool let me tell you why you're here you've taken the black pill you're here to witness the acceleration of the tesla model y performance from 40 kilometers an hour german autobahn let's go <laughs> what and 200 kilometers an hour 125 miles an hour now hard on the brakes because someone's blocking the road son of a battery electric vehicle one more time from 120 holy moly this is a supercar really <laughs> probably the cheapest supercar you can get and now here at high speeds 
it's not too loud actually so noise insulation has been improved and that stiff suspension now here plays a good role in keeping us safe and calm and collected on the road wow really impressed by the improved noise insulation dual insulation glass there and also lane change here super sporty great control over the vehicle wow i mean in that first acceleration though right you heard the uh, the luggage in the, in, the, in the trunk flying all over the place Whoa, okay, give me a minute Whew. Yoga session. Calmness. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Wow. That was something, right? Yeah, the screen is always really bright in the tunnel, right? You can... There is this auto-adjust of the brightness, though. It does set an auto-adjust brightness, but... Ah, there we go. So, slowly decreases now. That's interesting. Shall I test the sound <laughs> of the exhaust <laughs> in the tunnel? Whee! Whee! <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, adrenaline is slowly going down. I mean, really, these acceleration figures, I mean, no one will hardly ever use this acceleration for real, but it is surely stunning. And I really think that the interest for supercars is decreasing because for 60k, which is not a cheap car at all, of course, but for 60k, you can get supercar-like acceleration. At the same time, you don't have to crouch down into a supercar. It handles well and is also decently comfortable. I mean, yeah, and especially when the road is even, that's also one of the crucial points now. This is a different suspension here, different parts, and it sits lower, stiffer, and we have 21 inch wheels mounted here. The thing is, it is really stiff, that suspension. And when the road is even here, it's awesome to ride. Super great sporty ride, so much fun. Really like, you know, arcade style, like in a computer simulation, something is really cool. But when the road is really rough and you have bumps in the road, that suspension does give you a headache. Um, it has, to, has been the same with the long range model, but I feel that although this one here is lower, has the bigger wheels, you want to race me or what? Um, <laughs> uh, has the bigger wheels, the suspension is not worse in comfort. So to me, that sums up, the suspension is in a way better, yes. It is sportier and stiffer, has more fun in riding. Wow, it's so fast, that, that vehicle. And also you're handling around the corner. Oh, it's awesome, really awesome. But since we have the bigger wheels here and the stiffer and lower suspension setup, but it's not less comfortable from suspension, it's just, you know, as equal uncomfortable over uh, bad roads. But that really means that the suspension overall is still better. So maybe they can also put these hardware parts into normal long range models, put 19 inch wheels, not lower the chassis and then probably we'll have a better setup here for the car overall. However, still, if you seek comfort in an EV, the Tesla model Y suspension wise is still not the best. You know, that's that's the thing, you know. Um, so suspension is somewhat still a weak point, but definitely now with another focus and here for the performance model, it makes sense to have this stiffer setup. For the long range model, I don't think it makes sense. And also the parts they were using in Shanghai obviously, obviously yeah, didn't really fit that well. So here I feel the uh, hardware from Berlin, Berlin, Brandenburg, is a little bit better and in this case also more suitable to the vehicle. Let's test here, you know, cruise control. You can easily set it here, putting it down twice, and then you can also set the speed. And um, depending on which grade you bought, you also then have the auto steer, for example, um, navigation and autopilot. But again, autopilot is, yeah, it, 
you should enjoy it with, with caution because it's not an autopilot, it's still level two autonomous driving. That means it's somewhat limited, definitely. Yeah, as for the user interface while driving, temperature here in the lower part, you can work with that. It's still not ideal, as I said earlier here, with the analog watch. Do you want to talk to the car all the time? Temperature 19 degrees. Oh, temperature 90 degrees. The temperature is set to high. No. <laughs> Sorry. I said, I want to say 19, not 90. Yeah, but that's the thing that happened, and I'm busy here with that. And yeah, I still want dials. And also, I want the gauges, you know, the instrument cluster. And from 90 kilometers now, another acceleration before we get to some winding corners driving. Let's put that corner here. Happens immediately. And here now, this Nürburgring Nordschleife alike. Long bend. Wow. The car doesn't shake up too much. Good handling. Mm, tire choice could be a problem in a way. I feel that at some point it's drifting a little bit. I guess the reason is that the Tesla tires usually are set on a node a little bit harder, so they are more durable then. Um, yeah. So for best performance, you would need more performance seat tire. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but overall, it's still okay. And you, of course, at really high speeds, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, it gets noisy. But overall, I'm really happy with the noise insulation now, reducing the speed. So, I feel the Berlin build model here, the Tesla Model Y, being at the performance model or not, doesn't make the biggest difference. I feel there's not a huge difference to the Shanghai model as for the right quality. If there's a difference, it's better. That's my first impression. And we've also seen it around from the build quality, exterior, interior. Yeah, maybe the first few ones that left the building were kind of bogus. But then they have already improved the process and that all seems really fine. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a very important step for them, you know, with this uh, factory near Berlin. And would I rather take one from Germany? Defo, yes. I mean, it wouldn't matter to me that much if it would be the performance model or the normal long range model. But you, you support, you know, workforce that is based here in Germany and not in China, in a country where human rights don't play the biggest role. Let's take it that way. Hashtag irony. I mean, no, that was not irony, but it was not exaggerated. You know, it was like, a, you get what I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, for these reasons alone, I would take one from Germany. And of course, also uh, the transport is shorter, especially when you buy one in Europe and so on and so on. Um, yeah, of course, you can go, you know, for one from the US when you are in the US, in the US, of course. And probably for me saying that, um, maybe I'm not allowed to, to travel to China, China anymore then, but yeah. I'm not going there anywhere anymore. So that's uh, for, for this case. Um, back to the car. Ah, lovely. Slalom, right, left, right, left. It's beautiful, really nice. So yeah, so much fun. Even more fun in really winding corners. But before that, short remark to recuperation. There's always a discussion between one pedal driving with hard recuperation and recuperation via brake pedal rather with a rolling feeling. So, and some prefer this, some prefer that. Rolling is a little bit more combustion engine like with a little engine brake. One pedal driving feeling is pure EV experience. And then there's this new way in between with adaptive recuperation where you have recuperation when the car is in front of you, but you have rolling when there's freeway. The latter one is to me now the best solution. I have made up my mind. This one here is about one pedal driving feeling. And you can have that in a very comfortable way when you are used to lifting the throttle in a very smooth way. Otherwise, all your passengers will get nuts and they will be pushed into all these G-forces and will probably get sick. So, um, Tesla Model 3 is <laughs> so also greeting me friendly, really nice. 
So you have to be gentle with throttle both in pressing it and also in releasing it. And then you can also very well drive this car with one pedal driving, also with passengers. A lot of drivers from EV, especially if you're not used it, don't do it. I have made the experience always when I am being shuttled in electric vehicles at car events. <sighs> Sometimes I really have to talk to the driver and say, oh, could you maybe use the throttle a little bit more gently in both ways? Because you're like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, you're getting thrown around um, all over the place. Yeah, so um, and it can be also on yourself, maybe be a little bit harsh at times. So I meanwhile think that offering adaptive uh, recuperation is actually the best thing you can have, the best of both worlds. So sometimes you have one pedal driving situations where you have done good recuperation by the throttle pedal lifting and sometimes not. So I would like you invite you also to give me your comments on that special topic. But now, finally, to that winding corners. All right, guys, here we go. Whoa, and now that suspension is giving off that definite feedback. Nice behavior here out of the corners. Whoa, really good grip, great drive out of it. No understeering or whatsoever. But the road is also really rough here now. So the suspension is giving us, saying like, ah, oh, you know, hmm. don't want to be comfortable. But I really feel the suspension is still better here with the performance model, with the hardware from Giga Berlin. So that is something I really found out here now. Very interesting indeed. So yes, suspension rough, but not as bad as it was in the long range model from Shanghai I've driven. So that is definitely a step forward, but still really stiff. You have to like that. So once again, if you seek the most comfort from suspension with an EV, Model Y won't be your choice. If you like that really sporty character and suspension stiffness is not your main concern, but you rather appreciate the software and the range and like just all these modern features, this, you know, futuristic features here in the Tesla, then it is something for you. And yeah, definitely in this segment, one of the cars to consider. Me personally, I'm feeling a little bit more at home with the suspension, for example, of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. We also have a big EV comparison where we have all of the competitors there inside. You should definitely check out these. And of course, if you want to see more of this vehicle in winter time, with range and efficiency test, then check out our winter efficiency and supercharging episode.